And, uh, and now I just think the most amazing thing is about to happen. The, apart from the fact the children are going to go out to their church now, uh, our lovely Caroline is going to come up and preach for us today. Thank you, Father, for our daughter, Caroline, for being such a blessing. We thank you, Father, for your anointing on her today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm really honored today because the lady, the special lady that I've been working for for about six years has come to church, and it really blessed me. And the lovely lady I've been working with, Karen, and gotten to know, really loved the pair of them. They've come today, and that really blessed me so much to see them. Hallelujah. I'd like to talk today about something that really touched my heart. It's called Bonds of Love. I hope that it ministers to you the same way that it ministered to me. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, it says that God is love. He is an absolutely loving God. And we are made in his image. He wanted us to be like him, loving and kind and generous. He created us to receive love from him and give love to all who come across our path and the ones to whom that we are assigned personally in life. Love must be expressed. It has to find a way to be shown. Love is what we do just as much as what we say. The two foundational commandments from our Heavenly Father are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength. And to love our neighbor as ourself. Love for God is shown in obedience to him. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Love for people is shown in service to them. Love sticks. Love is a bonding agent. There are bonds of love. We say of people that have been married a long time and have been close together that they have a strong bond. The Bible says that love is kind. Kindness is a bonding agent. Kindness is eternal. People can make a strong bond through going through tough times together, comforting each other, sharing the pain. That's how groups are formed. They share with each other the pain they've gone through. They help each other and they console each other. And you will find that they become close through that. There are parental bonds, mothers and fathers with their children, grandparents with their grandchildren. I was personally amazed at the strength of that bond with grandchildren when my grandchildren were born. There are husbands and wives, brothers and sisters and best friends. Pets too. Some people bond with their pets. If you're kind to animals, they will be kind to you. They will love you. There are social groups. There are employers and employees. The church family of God bond together. We're supposed to make bonds within the family of God. God made us that way. If your heart is open and you want to and you're willing... You can make strong bonds of love with people the way that God intended you to. They will make you feel happy, loved, stronger, accepted, cared for, a belonging and some value in your life. Or you can choose not to bond. You can know somebody for 20 years or more. And it doesn't mean that you have a bond with them just because you know them. You can choose not to bond with God. You can choose not to bond with people. But you will become lonely, isolated, unfulfilled, and weaker than you should have been if you would have made bonds with people. The Bible says that it's not good for man to be alone. You can be alone, but it's not good for you. A man who isolates himself goes against all wise judgment, the Bible says. Bonding, making a love bond, is our choice. It's always our free choice. No one can make us. 
We choose who, we choose what, and we choose why. Bonding is a free will thing. It's love freely given and love freely received. I have always wondered why some people were closer to Jesus in the Bible than others. I've always wondered about that and thought why that is. And I think that the ones who chose to be close to Jesus and still choose to be close to Jesus are the ones that are the closest. They have a strong bond with Jesus. I I was listening this week as I was studying, and this statement came to me, and it's such a strong statement the more I say it. Judas and John were with the same Jesus. Judas and John were with the same Jesus. Judas could betray him so easily for money, but John stuck with him all the way to the cross, all the way. Jesus is no respecter of persons. He loves us all the same. But we choose how close we get to him. And we choose how close we get to others in our life. The week before Jesus died, he chose to be with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. In John chapter 11, it says specifically, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Mary and Lazarus. They must have really loved him and really bonded with him because there was such a closeness all the way through. You can read their story. And it was that Mary that put that precious perfumed oil onto Jesus' feet and wiped it away with her hair. Every time I read that story and I see the intimacy and the love and the bond that was there with Jesus, it makes me wish that that was me doing that. She chose to bond with Jesus. I would have loved to have done that. I would have loved to have been so close to him and put something precious onto his feet and wiped that with my hair. I would have loved to have done that. The strength of a love bond always amazes me. It's so beautiful. Here is a story. I could just put the picture up for me. Of a little girl called Amber Eistrick. I don't know if you've seen it on the news. I didn't actually see it on the news. But when I talk to people about it, they say, oh, yeah, I saw that on the news. She's a little girl. She's six years old, and she was mute from her birth. She's a twin. She'd never spoken before. She had a tracheotomy, which made speaking difficult for her. But she spoke her first words to that little donkey. She said, I love you, donkey, to that donkey. This is her story. I love you. Amber Icewick's first words are to her donkey pal. A six-year-old girl who has been mute since birth has spoken for the first time, saying, I love you, to a rescue donkey. Amber Icewick has grown close to shock since her parents first took her to a branch of the donkey sanctuary in 2012. She and her twin, Hope, suffered bleeds to their brain and they were bo- when they were born, and they were only weighing two pounds. Hope got stronger, but Amber needed a tracheotomy. That saved her life, but restricted the air to her vocal cords. She was taken to the sanctuary as often as possible by her mother, Tracy, 39, after bonding with shocks. Weeks later, she spoke her first words. Mrs. Icewick of Sutton Coalfield in the West Midlands said, It was such an emotional moment. I couldn't believe my daughter had finally found her voice. Shox was found lying almost strangled on an Irish farm with a rope tied tightly around his neck, but has been given a new lease of life. Amber's dad, Julian, said, We could see how strong a bond they had almost straight away by the way they were so gentle with, with each other. This story touched me so much. I was um, in Joan's house, the lady who I go to see every week, Jill's mum, and this newspaper clipping was on the table, and it caught my attention, and I read it. And as I read that, the revelation of the strength of that bond and the freedom that it brought to both of them, the way they loved each other, that love had to come out of that little girl. It had to be expressed. She had to say how she felt to that donkey. It's absolutely amazing. She chose the bond. It made them both stronger. The love made it happen. 
Love is an amazing power force. Song of Solomon says, many waters cannot quench love, nor can floods drown it. I love the book of Ruth. I love the fact that Ruth would not leave her mother-in-law. She had bonded with her very strongly. The other daughter-in-law left her, but the Bible says that Ruth clung to Naomi and spoke that beautiful poem, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. And your people shall be my people. And your God shall be my God. Because Ruth chose this bond, she became, you can read the story, an extremely blessed woman. These two women made each other stronger. And now there's a book in the Bible called The Book of Ruth. Because she chose to bond with that lady. There isn't a book called the book of Orpah, who was the other daughter-in-law who didn't bond with her. But there's a book of Ruth. And there are many more. There are David and Jonathan, Esther, Mordecai. There are many more throughout the Bible, people who decided and chose to make a strong bond that made them stronger, saved their lives, made them become king, made them become queens. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 37 says, of God speaking to Israel, I will make you pass under the rod and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Our heavenly father brings us into the bond of the covenant, a love bond to us. That love bond says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. 25 years ago, I chose to bond with my heavenly father because my natural father had failed to bond with me. That caused so much pain and anguish in my life. It made me be practically an alcoholic. It made me get into all sorts of trouble because I was desperate to be loved by my father. And I couldn't make him love me no matter what I tried to do. He decided to not to express that love or to show me that I was treasured by him or valued by him. To this day, he doesn't come to my home or see my grandchildren or really have anything much to do with me unless I ring him. I can't make him bond with me. But I never had to make my heavenly father bond with me. He just did it. And that's what saved my life. It was the most glorious thing I ever did. He made me strong. He healed me of all that rubbish, forgave my sins, gave me a brand new life that I love, that I enjoy. I'm not depressed. I'm not, you know, there's nothing that I know that's wrong with me. I'm quite normal, you know, which is a miracle, actually. (laughs) And uh, my bond is strong with my Heavenly Father. I could never go away from Him. I love Him so much. I'm a covenant girl through and through. And I love to see a rainbow. You can ask anybody, I'm a bit of a rainbow chaser. Ephesians 4 4, um, verse 3 says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is a bond of peace. Sometimes people fail to bond emotionally, and it's very painful for everybody concerned for families and loved ones. But Jesus can heal that pain. I'm living proof of that. I heard of a man who, when his father died, the next Sunday, he took all his personal belongings, all his things, to a car boot sale. People saw it. And he had no emotional attachment to those things whatsoever. Because he had no strong bond with his father, there was nothing there. Nothing was valued and nothing was treasured because he hadn't been valued and he hadn't been treasured. The man who told me this story was so shocked that he was able to just take the things and sell them and have the money. But it didn't surprise me when I asked a few questions and he wasn't close to his father at all. There was no love bond. Sometimes in the church, it's very painful when people leave in a way that's not right because they haven't made a love bond. When the church, within the church family, they just used the church family for a season. They didn't bond with it or love it. A long time ago, there was a family. We all loved them. 
One Sunday after the service, the man gave a letter to my dad, and they just left, just like that. After years and years of being in the church, being in everything, doing everything with us and together, they just left. They just disappeared like a vapor. They didn't say goodbye to anybody properly. It hurt a lot of us very, very much. And we were sad and we were confused. And then I read in 1 John chapter 2, verse 19, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be, might be made manifest that none of them were of us. We bonded with them, but they didn't bond with us. It's a free choice. God made us to be relational, personal, all the soaps on the telly about how people are relating to each other or not. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, Even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Love is the bond of perfection. Over three years of running Precious Ones Baby Group, I've made bonds with lots of children and their parents, their carers, foster mothers, grannies, granddads. When they're so tiny, they come and they're so beautiful and I try and make them relaxed and make them feel happy to enjoy themselves. And they stay with us until they go to school. On the last day, it always makes me teary. I'm really well emotional about it all. There are gifts and flowers and I always get them a little present and there are thank you cards. And I can't ever finish reading the thank you cards without crying. And after they leave, I still think about them. Well, after they've left and wonder how they're doing their little faces, the hugs, the laughter, the singing together. And I think about the mums and how they're doing. But some, though, don't make a bond. That's their choice. And it was really sad. But they haven't given of themselves or allowed themselves to be loved. The love has been here like it has been for everybody else. And it's been poured out on them, but they don't receive it. And they don't pour their love out from them into anybody else. They don't give you a chance to get to know the real them or to see them. It's a really sad thing. I'm seeing it all around at the moment. And this revelation of love bonds has been so clear to me, the way it's our free choice to make a bond with people, to love people, to let the love out of you, to let people love you. Kenneth Copeland says, we must believe the love. Allow ourselves to be loved by God and people. Let our love out and let their love in. Make a bond. If we don't bond with people, we will try to bond with stuff. Houses that are going to be sold long after you're gone. Gardens that will grow and change and belong to somebody else. Cars that will be sold and scrapped. All sorts of stuff that people bond with because they don't want to bond with people. But they never find the fulfillment in those bonds. A lady called Gloria Coblin says, what gets your attention will get your affection. What you give your time to, your heart will follow it. But love, time with people and affection will be passed on. Love is eternal. A man said to me this week in the shop where I work, that his little boy didn't want presents. His little boy was much happier if he took a bag of nails and a hammer and went out in the garden and sat with him and played and spent time with him. That makes him happy. That little boy at that little age wants to bond. That's what he wants to do. You bond by spending time, by just doing the simplest of little things. That's how you bond. It's kind to give presents and it's nice to give presents. But what's really needed is the bond of love, of being together and being affectionate to one another, being kind to one another, loving one another. Sometimes you have to get this relationship straight before you can get these relationships straight. Sometimes it's very hard for you because you may have been harmed growing up. 
your parents might not have bonded properly with you, like what happened to me, and that can make you fearful, and that can make you sad, and you, you don't relate properly to people. But your life doesn't have to end that way. It doesn't have to be written over your life, failure to bond. That doesn't have to be that way, because Jesus heals this. Jesus releases us. Jesus helps us, and he gives us the courage to put ourselves out on the line and to love people. Sometimes it does hurt a little bit, like that family that left the church. Sometimes it does hurt a little bit. But I would rather be a lover of God and a lover of people and experience that love and joy and peace than to keep it all in. If there's anything at all that I've spoken about today that you know there's a problem either with you expressing love to people or receiving love into your life, if there's anything at all that you think, yeah, that's me, and I know that it has to change. I want you to take courage today and know that God is listening to you, that God will minister to you, and he will help you. He'll heal that pain that's in your heart that's been put there, and he'll give you the courage to love other people. I've said this to in the shop, you know, that before I was a Christian, I wasn't a very loving person. I wasn't a very kind person. I had me on my mind because of what I'd been through and the pain that I'd gone through. But Jesus healed all that and made me a loving, kind person that is able to love other people and receive their love. And he'll do the same for you. Amen.